Good morning, YouTube, and happy Thursday. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I'm in early this morning to make sure that my lab is set up for the tie-dye experiment that my students are doing. So we're gonna be tie-dyeing t-shirts today. It's my AP kids. I'm more than happy to do this for them. They have worked so hard all school year. So I've got the dye already made. The lab is pretty much prepped. They just need to put out gloves and stuff. Um, and set up the sodium carbonate bath. And of course, I don't believe in just doing tie-dye for the sake of doing it. They're gonna do a digital escape room today to learn about the chemistry of tie-dye. But this video really isn't about like the tie-dye experiment. It's more about something personal that I've experienced and I think a lot of people, at least early on in their teaching careers, are always wondering like, how do I know if I should find a new teaching job? So I'm gonna offer some insight and just share a little bit about my journey and my path to finding and landing my most, you know, amazing teaching position that I have right now and um, just kind of give you some insight as far as you know how do you know if it's the right time to leave and look for a new job so I am going to start setting up for my lab today but I will be sure to check in with you guys a little bit later on well I finished with three classes so far for today and I'm gearing up to go into period nine and I just want to quickly talk about what I did for tie-dye now with the AP kids you know these two weeks of AP exams I kind of just give them time to just decompress and relax study for their other AP exams next week though we will be starting with a project and I'm really excited I'm gonna definitely share with you guys what I'm doing with them but it's gonna of course incorporate choice because I love incorporating choice for students so I'll give you all those details but I'll be next next week and so this week you know again they're doing the tie-dye they're kind of chilling out and playing games um, and with the tie-dye they let the shirt soak in the sodium carbonate solution and then while that's happening the students then were doing a digital escape room for tie-dye um, they had a really great time they're AP students so they were able to get through that digital escape room very very quickly um, I want to say the first team finished like within six minutes and I was like oh my god that's crazy um, so they finished so fast and it was just again just something to just understand a little bit about the chemistry of tie-dye I don't really believe in like doing activities just for the sake of doing them I kind of want them to know a little bit about it so um, they did great with it and they were very competitive and uh, it was a lot of fun and now I'm just kind of gearing up for period nine in my CP chemistry class we're talking about collision theory so I have a um, do now today that they're going to be looking at collision theory kind of reviewing some analogies to collision theory and then we're going to be talking about potential energy diagrams so because I only have a few more minutes left before they come in I'm probably gonna end this here but I will definitely check in with you a little bit later to talk a little bit about how you know when it's best to leave your teaching job I just finished with my classes for the day and I wanted to check in with you all it was a really good day the students were very busy today but i want to talk to you about something that i'm a little nervous to uh, i am going to be pretty vulnerable with you today i know in a lot of my videos i don't really share a lot about my personal life or you know my past and i think i think now i'm ready to share a little bit um because it's not so fresh um, it's you know definitely been a few years since i've changed jobs and i feel a little bit more comfortable talking about my path to basically landing one of the best teaching jobs i've ever had and so i want to talk to you about how you know when it's the right time to change teaching jobs so to give you a little bit of background i graduated from cabrini university in 2003 and then i completed my student teaching that following fall at the time, I was at a um, more suburban high school, and then I put in my application to the Archdiocese of Philadelphia because I was like, I knew I needed to find a teaching job and I was gonna try to find one in the middle of the school year. So I put in my application and I was actually hired to teach physical science and a lower level biology class. And um, it was an inner city school called John W. Hallahan High School, an all girls Catholic school. and. It was a lot of fun. I was I was in my element. I loved every part of it. We just had a great time. Um, I learned so much that first year, and I think about them all the time. And uh, you know, I, I definitely miss the inner city. Um, it was just such a like a girl power environment. Like I felt like we were really 
changing the world. I felt like as a teacher, I was really making a direct impact with these kids. Unfortunately, I was riffed that year. So there was a reduction in force. Basically, another person kind of bumped me out because usually the, the saying goes, last one hired is the first one fired. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to teach that there that following year. And I ended up finding a new teaching position back in New Jersey at my former high school. So I started teaching at the high school that I went to school at, and I was a chemistry teacher there for six years. And overall, I would say it was a really good experience. I remember that first year, I had a great mentor who was actually my former chemistry teacher. I had an in-class support teacher who was phenomenal. Um, definitely, I would say she she really, really helped me um, in terms of just pedagogy, making connections with kids. She was she was a wonderful in-class support teacher. And um, you know, that first year and second year, I would say I was in my glory. I was really, really happy, really enjoying it. And I think it was because it was just so new and it's what I always wanted to do. And here I am, you know, teaching at my own high school. I'm giving back directly to the community that I, you know, got a lot from. And so it was a great experience. But then, you know, as the years kind of went on, I got married and, you know, I went from having just one prep of CP chemistry within class support to having two preps, which was CP and honors. And then I went on to having three preps, which was CP, honors, and AP. And at that point, the stress was really getting to me. And um, at the time when I was married, my husband was, we were talking about having a family. And, you know, with the amount of time I was spending preparing for my classes, the job really wasn't conducive to having a family. And so, I said to myself, you know, I really need to make a switch here. And so I went to my supervisor at the time and I basically said like, I really am struggling with the balance and I really need some help with, you know, not having so many preps. And the response at the time was, well, if you don't teach it, who will? And it really upset me because there were other colleagues that only had one prep the entire time that I was teaching there. They had a single prep. And it really made me feel like because I was such a good teacher and I was really taking my job so seriously, I was very dedicated to my job that I was being taken advantage of. And um, so I said to myself, you know, I, I don't think this is a really good fit. And at my my husband at the time too was saying, you know, I think it's about time that you know you look for another position. And you know, besides all of that, you know, besides the mental health issue, you know, and and finding balance in my life, that was definitely a struggle. But also in the back of my mind, I was saying to myself, like, I'm not growing as a teacher. And if you're not growing as a teacher, then that means that you need to either seek professional development on your own or you just need to be thrown into a different environment to make sure that you're growing professionally. And so obviously I chose the latter because I would say that like learning opportunities for me in that district really wasn't, they really weren't there. There wasn't any like support for that. I didn't really feel like you know, there was an investment in teachers and learning. And so I just said, you know what, I don't, I don't think this is right for me. So I said to myself, you know what, I want to go somewhere where I can learn stuff and I can do better and I can become a better teacher. And I want to feel respected and supported. And, and so I said to myself, you know, I think it's time that I look for a new job. And people thought I was crazy. They, you know, in New Jersey, we have tenure. People thought I was crazy because I was tenured and I was leaving a tenured position. And I wanna assure everyone that watches this channel, if you have tenure in your state, now not everybody does, but if you have tenure in your state and you are a good teacher, you're going to get tenure. Tenure means absolutely nothing. If you're not happy, you need to find a new job. And you just need to take comfort in the fact that if you are always doing what's best for the kids, you're going to get tenure. And so that's kind of what made me feel like I'm going to be okay. Like it's going to be okay. I don't need the job security of tenure to make me question like, 
if tenure is more important than like my mental health, for example. So I said, you know what, I'm going to look for a new job. And I ended up finding a job that was actually three minutes away from my house at the time. Although it was pretty different because it was a middle school. Now, besides it being a middle school, it was also a very small school. So there were definitely two, two big changes there. Um, in terms of the small school, that was a little bit of a struggle because I went from having a lot of pressure and a lot of time that was required to prep for my classes. There was now a lot of pressure on me to start hosting extracurricular activities and advising clubs and doing all this extra stuff and staying late at school. and. You know, it was just like a whole nother can of worms. And so I, I was like, oh boy, this is a big mess. And then of course, the second thing, right? Middle school, um, completely different than high school. I don't know what I was thinking, but I, the best way to explain it for me and, and God bless the middle school teachers, but the easiest way to explain it is like, in middle school, you feel more like a mom than a teacher. You're, you're teaching the kid instead of teaching the subject. And I love chemistry, so that made like a huge, downturn for me because I was like, oh God, like, I don't know if I can, can like do what I love here, especially because NGSS came about. And then there was talk of like, you know, changing what I'm teaching to being biology and physics. And it was like, chemistry is my first love. Like, that's what I want to teach. So then I said, you know what, this just is not going to work. So I did a year at middle school. And as far as what I learned there, I would say you probably should not change so many things at once. And I wish somebody said that to me. I mean, the three minute commute was like amazing, but I would happily drive 30 minutes if, you know, I could teach chemistry and high school and whatever. So, so yeah, so I did that and that was a little crazy. And then I looked for a new job and I landed my current teaching position, which I absolutely love. And you know, how did I know that this was the right position for me? Well, I will say when I had my interview, I interviewed with the supervisor. I was a, a veteran teacher at that point, right? Taught seven years and basically was very candid about the things that I liked and the things that I didn't like and you know that I was very eager and willing to learn because I felt like I wanted to teach science how, you know, what science based on how science really looks, you know, when you're when you're doing science. And so I said to myself, you know, I I want to be really upfront with this person because I don't want to make another misstep in my career. And so um, I felt really good about the conversation that I had with um, the supervisor at the time. I felt like, wow, like I'm going to have so many more opportunities to learn because the pedagogy that's used in this school is so different than anything that I've done before. And, and you guys all know, I've had my business, Miss Raz Chem Class, for over a decade. And you've seen how my products have evolved based on where I've been teaching. You know, I was completely chalk and talk. And there is a time and a place for that. But now what I do is I like do my chalk and talk in a video and I engage my students in activities during class. But you know, you got to do what's comfortable for you. You got to do what's set, you know, in terms of the culture at your school. But for me, by changing to this new school, I have learned and completely revamped everything that I do. I feel like I didn't have the academic freedom to do that, at least in my previous high school. And so here I am, I landed my ideal job. And, you know, of course there was some like worry, like, am I going to be good at this student center teaching thing? You know, am I going to get tenure? I mean, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was very nervous about it because I was like, oh boy, you know, I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get tenure, but I knew that I was a good teacher and I knew that I would do whatever I had to do to make sure that I was learning and growing and just constantly talking to my supervisor, making sure that my supervisor understands that I always have the best interests of the students at heart. So what do I want you to get out of this? You know that you need to find a new job when you're sacrificing your mental health, when you're spending more and more of your personal time working on school stuff, when you're telling your supervisor that you know, I am really struggling. I can't be teaching all of these preps and they're basically not listening to you and completely dismissing you. If you're not respected as a professional, that's when you need to find a new teaching job. 
And don't you dare be afraid of not getting tenure. Because again, if you're doing what's in the best interest of the kids, you're gonna get tenure and you're gonna be a well-respected faculty member. So have faith in that, have faith in your abilities. And I know this video is a little different than anything I've done in the past. This is such a personal topic and I hope it's okay that I'm vulnerable with you guys today. But if any of you wanna to talk to me about some of the things that I've shared, or you have questions, or you just wanna kinda of roll some ideas around with me, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, I'm happy to, to help you in any way possible. You can send me an email at mrazkemclass.com. You can join my Facebook group. Um, but I just hope that what I'm relaying to you can help you avoid some of the mistakes that I made in terms of how I landed my ideal teaching job so that you can kind of have a more straight path to landing the job that you want. So I am going to get out of here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you guys next week.